How's it going everyone? My name is Nori Plays and welcome back to the 100 day drawing series. In this one, we're covering something that could be very, very hard, but something that could be very, very simple. In this episode, we're going to tackle perspective. If you don't know what perspective is, I'll teach you right away. But first, I have to explain a few things. Most people draw their shapes like this. So they draw... If I tell you to draw a cube, they think that this is how you draw a cube. The problem with this is this cube isn't actually following any rules of perspective. It looks good. So if I even draw the background, it looks really good, doesn't it? But this cube doesn't follow any perspective. The reason why is because none of these points leads to a vanishing point. And if there is one, it's really narrow and really far away. So in this episode, I'm hoping to teach you a really important skill to have when you're drawing, and that's perspective. And it'll make your drawings look every crap ton better. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm actually gonna whip out a ruler for this one. So I can show you guys what I mean. I don't know if Clip Studio has a ruler, but I'm gonna have to use a ruler for this. So, a perspective, I'm gonna show you guys one point perspective, two point perspective, and three point perspective in this video. Now, the reason why perspective is useful is because it creates a sense of realism in your drawing. What do I mean by that? Okay, so let's start with a one point perspective. All you have to do is just draw a point. Any point, anywhere. Just draw it anywhere. And then from there, just draw a bunch of lines coming from it. That's all you have to do. Just draw a crap ton of lines coming from it. As well as the horizon line, which basically looks like this. What horizon line means is basically where where all your objects meet the horizon. So if you look above the horizon line, that means you're looking at something from below. And if you're drawing below the horizon line, that means you're looking at something from above. And if you're drawing at the horizon line, that means you're looking at the object directly straight ahead. Uh, we as artists have to get used to the idea that our eyes are a camera. Literally, quite literally. So now that we have these points, I'm going to show you guys how one point perspective works. And the way it works is you can draw your standard cube, like the front of it. Stored. We're going to do this with cubes first, and then I'll elaborate into other shapes. So you draw a cube, like the front of it. And then what happens is the lines that form the 3D stuff of a cube they all go towards that point so if we draw from the point to the corners of the cube hey you can see that it's starting to look realistic and then from then all you do is what you did before just connect that and now you have a cube that makes perfect sense in a 3D space. It's all about learning the 3D space around you to create an illusion of something looking real. So let's try drawing the cube above the horizon line, which means we're looking at the underside of the cube. The more we do this, the more you'll see how we're looking at the underside of the cube. Uh, and how to rotate things within this space. Basically, whenever you move the face, we'll move it up here. Draw the same face. The same thing. The same thing. And then do the same thing. Connect up the corners of the cube with the dot. Like so. And then look. We do the same thing again. And now we can see underneath that cube. Isn't that just weird? How would you draw a circle in this perspective? So 
I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick on how you can figure out to draw circles in this perspective because this perspective, just any perspective in general makes circles harder to draw. So say I wanted to find a cylinder or a circle on the bottom of this side of the cube. All you would do is connect up the corners. Connect up the corners like this. And then this tells you the middle of the circle. Now from the middle of the circle, you go around like this. Now look at that. You have found the circle on the underside of the cube. Let's draw that again. Like so. And that is how you find a circle within a cube. If you wanted to do it on the front, it's even easier. So you have it from the middle and then you just connect all the sides. You can even feather it. It doesn't really matter like this to get another circle. Same with this side. If you wanted to get it for this side, do the same thing. You can see that this circle is going to be a lot more vertical due to how the X looks. So it's going to look something like this. That's simple. That's how you draw circles in 3D space. Now, that is one point perspective, but before we move on to two point perspective, I'll show you guys how to draw a triangle, for example, or a harder shape. So if I wanted to draw a triangle, like a pyramid, for example, I would draw the bottom. Actually, no, you know what? Let's draw the front. Just draw a triangle in the front like this. Start with the basic shape and then you see you see this again? You're gonna connect up every single point to that vanishing point. Every corner. And then what happens is you simply connect it back. Don't worry about the angle of this line. That's the angle of the line that you don't have to worry about. You can make it as wide as possible. You can make it... But the rule is that it's vanishing towards this point in the middle. That's how you draw that. Say you wanted to draw this in a, into a cone. So what you would do... Is... Connect the points first. Find a circle within this. So again, just make a cross and then just draw the circle. That connects the bottom. And then we could round it off. Round off all the edges to the point where you get a cone. Kind of like that. So that is one point perspective. Very easy, everything, no matter how you draw it, vanishes towards this point. And everything looks correct because it's in the, within that 3D space. Like that, with the front being shaded in like this, for example. Okay, Nori, how do you draw in two-point perspective? You do the same as what we did with one-point perspective. So we'll start it from the left. And we'll also put another point. You don't have to use a ruler. You can literally place this point anywhere to the right. So in this case, the horizon line is going to be there. And then from every single point, again, Boom. 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 Using a ruler will get you the most accurate results. But if you can draw this with your hand, then it's a good skill to have. Because then you can at least not use a ruler when you need to. Okay. So what happens with a two-point perspective is, as you can see, these points kind of match 
in the middle. So all I'm drawing is lines that come from each dot. Now what happens here is that if you are drawing a cube, the horizontal lines disappear, but the vertical lines stay. Now what do I mean by that? If you are drawing a cube, anything on the left side of a cube will bend towards this point. Anything on the right side will bend towards this point. If you want a cube facing straight, in this perspective, you would do something like this. So, say we are looking from below. So, we're going to see the underside of the cube again. You draw that. Your vertical lines stay the same. That's the horizon line. So, this is where there's no distortion. And then... There you go. That would be your cube, at least in this 3D space. Okay, let's raise it a little higher for my example so that it's easier to understand. We're going to draw the underside of the cube first. So this point, which is the left side of the cube, is going to go in towards this point. The right side is going to go in towards that point. This is also going to go in towards this point. Like this. And that side is also going to go in towards this point. So you end up with something that looks like that. The ver remember, the vertical lines stay the same for two point. And then look at this. It all just forms kind of for you. I'm going to use a ruler for this, just because I have one right next to me. If you don't, don't worry. You don't need to use one. There you go. So now you're looking at the cube from below within this perspective. How do you look at it from above? So you see the top of the cube. Well, hey, we have this stuff in place, so let's just try it. First, you draw the vertical line kind of show the size of your cube then again draw the point that goes into each corner like this vertical point again to break up the middle of the cube and hey got ourselves a cube in 3D space. The reason why you can't draw the cube like you could before, like this, like from straight ahead, is because now each side is vanishing to the point, which leads to this kind of distortion. Which doesn't really end up like a cube anymore. You know what I mean? You could still technically draw a cube. That faces straight. But only the vertical lines will stay straight. All of these lines are going to converge towards each vanishing point. Which is why you get what you get with this. So again, if you want to be good at art, you want to get good at one point, two point, and three point perspective until it becomes stuck in your head. Absolutely stuck in your head. That's two point perspective. Everything's warping to both this side and this side at the same time, which means that different sides are going to warp to different things. And this is not going to be the only day when we do this. I'm going to be doing these, this for several days in a row because I really want to get perspective ingrained into my brain cell to the point where I can draw 
people in perspective. Now, I can't do that yet. I can't show you guys how to do that if I can't even do it to begin with. But I can draw basic shapes in this perspective and that's what I want you guys to understand. Don't jump the hurdle and don't try to ignore these things. Unless you're just drawing, studying from reference. If you're trying to draw from imagination, you need this stuff. Three point perspective. This is the last perspective point I'm going to cover because I'm going to be practicing all of these outside of videos and in videos to hopefully get a lot better. So what happens in three point perspective is like before, you have one and two points. Then you can decide to have a point above or below. Now in this case, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with a point below because I've placed these a lot higher. So I'm just going to draw a line. And then I'm going to draw a line vertically. It's got to be a bit curved. Don't mind it though. I'm just freehanding it because I cannot be asked to use this ruler. Okay. I'm just trying to show the main point. So again, from every single point, you draw a line. Every single point, you draw a line. Okay. You can see what is happening now. What is happening is that our vertical lines are also gone now. So we don't have our horizontal lines or our vertical lines anymore. And this is the perspective most people struggle with the most. There's also four point and five point, which is like another realm of godly, but I'm not there yet. So I'm just going to practice three point perspective with all of you right now. So a three point perspective, again, the warping to both points horizontally. But at the same time, the vertical lines are also warping towards point number three. So I'm going to label these points. This is point one, point two, and point three is the vertical. So, we know that point three is going to warp our vertical. So you want to start with your verticals first. It doesn't really matter, but it helps me the most. Again, the horizon line is between one and two. But then you also get a vertical split from three going up, kind of crossing here. If you draw a box here, it's not going to warp at all. It's just going to be like this. You're looking directly at the box. But the moment you start to incorporate the perspective, Well, even this is going to warp. Even this is going to warp. I'll show you why. The reason why even the box, the basic box here is going to warp is because it still has to go down. Still has to go down. All these points are going to warp towards one. Look at that. It's still warping even at the horizon line. Again, let's draw it from above. You can see now that the underside is going to be completely warping. So left side, do the left side as always. Now the vertical lines are going to start warping towards three. The other side is going to warp towards two. Like this. Vertical line is going to warp towards three. And towards two. And then towards one. And then you can see we have a cuboid type shape from the underside. Again, trying to find a circle. Within the shape would be pretty simple. Pretty simple. It would just be a matter of connecting the dots like that. I want to draw a longer oval. I just do the same thing. I just connect the corners. And then 
draw the circle like that. Connect the corners. See how warping this has really warped where the center goes. I'll draw the point of center. So this is the center, this is the center, and this is the center. If you train yourself to find the center by eye, you're also going to be really good and really well off. So I recommend you guys start doing this stuff as well. Let's draw a pyramid like we're looking at it from above now. What's going to happen is something really weird with a triangular shape in this perspective. So first, we draw the base. In this case, making the base will be easier than actually drawing the triangle shape itself. Now, in order to draw a pyramid, we have to link it up to one of these points. Draw a point. Uh... And this kind of follows the warp towards free, but it doesn't follow it too strictly. So it would look something like this. Now that's not a square based pyramid because a square based pyramid would have looked entirely different. See like that's, that's a rectangular pyramid. If you wanted a square base pyramid, your base would have to be evenly sized for that to happen. So let's try that. Try only draw one face at a time before you extend so that you know your proportions are right. What do I mean by that? So say we draw another pyramid right here. You want to draw the same proportions for every single side like this you find the middle then use that to go through the middle find your top apex point of the cone and you just simply connect all the sides like this and that's your pyramid in perspective. Then all you do is just connect the corners. That's a perfectly square pyramid. Now say we're looking at a cube from above. In this case, we just follow these rules. Again, right? These rules are in place for us to be easily able to use them. We're looking at a cube from above. Again, we can start from the base or from the top. In this case, what you'd be seeing is the top, so you'd start from the top. I said top a lot of times just then. So just checking that my perspective is right. Look at that. And then it warps towards two. Like this. And it warps towards one. Again, what I'm realizing is that my squares aren't very square. To fix that, I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, cool. So now it's really gonna warp the hell out of this because we're converging to the third point. Like crazy. Because the further you get from the third point, from this point right here, the more it's going to warp the horizon, the vertical line, as you can see. See, see how, because this is in line with free, it, it doesn't really warp it as much vertically. But the further you get away, it's unbelievable how much it warps this cube. It warps it like crazy. And then you match it to two and go to one. And this is still in 3D space in a three point perspective. Now an artist I know that does this or did this with his mind was Kim Jong-gi. That guy was able to have the perspective in his mind to the point where he didn't need to draw any of these grids. 
but we all know that he started use it by using these grids so if you want to be like kim jong gi and you want to be a crazy master sure it will probably take you longer than him to learn this because this is not easy to imagine in your brain um accurately enough it's just it's just not it's so difficult like i'm struggling even with the grid let alone without it so for the people that can draw without the grid like this it's wizardry to me it's absolute wizardry let's try maybe combine some shapes this time in three point perspective this is probably one of my most favorite perspective because of how everything gets so distorted um in this one it becomes more of a wider lens um also setting these points further apart from each other will create a more narrow image well in this case it's up or down for point three to so create a more narrow image because if you imagine i'm gonna lower the opacity this for right now and i'll draw this in red so if you imagine like you're the camera i'll draw a simple cube indicating where you are trying to focus as a camera so imagine this is a sheet of paper right if our points are outside the sheet of paper we're gonna get a more narrow image right but the perspective is always gonna join up even when it's outside the piece of paper because that's how perspective works um, you gotta be able to visualize these points sometimes outside of the page if you want to be good at drawing in perspective because if you draw with perspective within the page what happens is you get a lot more distortion in the image because there's a lot more going on but if the moment you move these points outside that means you are zooming in a lot more so that's what's happening and then your camera is like this i'm gonna remove these points for a minute i'm gonna try to explain this the best way i can so if you're focusing you need to you need to imagine this in your head like you're the camera if you're above the horizon line you are looking at underneath an object you're below that means you are looking from above So imagine that you are doing this in your head, okay? In an imaginary grid, perspective grid, and you're searching for what angle you want to draw the thing you want to draw out. And that's the hardest skill to obtain. We're just here to start with the goddamn basics. By <laughs> learning how to draw a cube in this kind of perspective. Okay, hopefully I fried your brain by now. Um, if I have, let's go back to the basics and start with one point perspective again. So, I'm going to delete all of this. All of this. Now we're going to try combine shapes together. That sounds exciting, right? It's combining shapes together to make a more interesting shape. Okay. Because you guys are probably like, yeah, this is all useful. But how do I actually draw a harder shape? How do I go beyond just using cubes and pyramids? I'll show you how. Okay, here we go. Say I want to draw a cylinder with a cube on top of it. And we are looking from below. So we are placing this above the horizon line because we are of a horizon line so if we look at the cylinder okay i should probably draw the face of the cylinder first like the sides okay if i draw this and then i draw that and then i draw a circle here and a circle there is our cylinder and it's going 
should be going towards the vanishing point. Let's check. It's not. Okay, rub it out. Try again. Now it is accurately going towards the vanishing point, more or less. We want to add a cube to this. How the hell do we add a cube to this? Well, let's think about it for a second. In one point perspective, we know that horizontal lines and the vertical lines do not change. They do not change. So you can easily start by mapping out the middle of the circle. Then just simply drawing a square. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Just draw a square in the middle of that sucker. And then guess what? Vanishing points. Exist. And then you get the sides of your cube that come out. From the vanishing point. Uh, let me think. Yes, so boom. And then again, you just end up doing this. And then if you get rid of the lines behind all that, even the cylinder that we drew, it doesn't matter because it's still technically accurate. You will see. That we have drawn, I don't know if that's the word for it, drawn, um, a cube on a cylinder. Okay, how do I extend it so that we can add like a pointy sharp edge to that cube? Well, we know that we have to find the middle of something. And then we have to extend that in perspective. In perspective, you have a point. And hey, look at that. Perspective does wonders. Boom. Boom. And that is a pyramid. It's a triangle on top of this damn cube. Look at that. We can even get rid of the lines of the cube from behind. And now you have pretty much what looks like a spear. A spear in 3D space. You can morph the cube into a more rounded shape. Because we are in perspective. We know that it will warp towards the point. So now we end up with a more rounded cylinder before we end up at the spearhead. This is why perspective drawing is so important. You can do so much with this. Let's try drawing the same spear but a bit more straight ahead. So you draw a circle then we draw a vanishing points extending from that circle. Look at that. It's at the horizon line, which means there's not going to be as much distortion. There will still be distortion. Never get it twisted. Okay. And because the lines never get distorted on the cube, we do the base of the cube. See, so we got the placement of the cube wrong. What you can actually do is just draw an X from the cylinder, and then you'll get the perfect placement of the cube. So that it's right bang in the middle. And then again, let's try play with this cube to maybe try and extend it a little bit. In this direction. So it would be like this, and it would be like that. Then it'll do this. And then because there's no distortion on this side, 
and then you'd end up with this. This one is more of a rectangle, as you can see. That's fine. There we go. So this one's flying way, 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 way closer to our eyeball. Now, one point perspective is mainly used in stuff like comics to show your fist really like this, just boom, forcing its way into the camera. That's kind of when you would use the one point to show a really dramatic scene. You you would the next time you watch a maybe a TV show or movie, try and break down where the perspective point is. If there is only one or if it's two. I've done that uh yesterday actually when I was watching anime, I was like, hold on. These people actually use perspective. And I was really impressed. Yeah, so here you go. Wow, look. You can figure out everything in perspective. Everything, every little detail. And it makes it look really realistic. This is definitely the best way to level up your drawings, like, by far. Because if you can do this without this entire grid, that means that you can draw anything in perspective. As long as you imagine it. Because it becomes really believable what you make in this perspective. So again, we'll round this off like we did with the other one. We'll round it off in a way that it's trying to meet the perspective point. Like that. So we literally just drew the same spear the same spear, but facing in a different direction on the plane. The exact same thing. Oh, you want it facing the other way? Well, guess what? If I simply just lassoed this, and I flipped it on its head... Like this, and I moved it here... It makes perfect sense still. That's because it's still on the same horizontal level and all the points are still converging into that vanishing point. So this is the same as this, just moved, rotated in 3D space. And if you can think like this when it comes to people, when it comes to animals, when it comes to breaking down a photo of someone, you will get very far but this does take time you need to keep practicing this every day every single day just so that you can get this right even now like i still struggle with three point like i said there's also two point where they converge to each point try practice each of these and try get the hang of every single one, one step at a time. Only move on to the next one when you feel like you've already mastered one of them. I still have a feeling like I still haven't even mastered one point when it comes to crazy shapes, at least anyway. If it comes to like a human head, let's try. You know what? Let's try a human head. New layer. Uh, I'm using a pencil. Do not use a pencil. Well, you can if you want. So look, a human head. You remember the box method from that last video? I bet you do. I bet you, all of you do. Look at that. All these points converge to that vanishing point. Like this. Look, if you break it down the middle, On both sides and then you curve it off you have something now that resembles the top of the head the cranium and what happens is there you go look at that 
Isn't that the cranium that we saw before? And then the lower is like this, like that. And then, you know what I'm saying? I need to mess with this a lot more, but from simple cubes, you can use those cubes to transform it into anything else you want. A head, a circle, a dome, anything, anything, anything. And this is why perspective is so damn important, okay? I'm gonna show you guys something I drew the other day. Okay, this is what I did yesterday off camera in a three point perspective. You can see that you can combine all sorts of elements, horns, cubes coming out of pyramids. You can build a building, a castle, uh, start with basic, basic things, and then work your way into much harder ones that you can understand. Do not rush this, because this, if you rush this, you will not remember this, you will not have it in your muscle memory. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you are new. I will be doing this every single day for a few days until probably when I get bored of it. But apart from that, I'll see all of you in the next one. Peace out.